Forged in the fires of the First World War, the 80th always lived up to its adopted Latin motto, Vis Montium, or Strength of the Mountains. Inspired by the noble majesty of the mountain peaks which gave the unit its nickname, the Blue Ridge Division. After 20 plus years as an Army Reserve Division following the Great War, the 80th was once again called upon to show its strength when the horrors of the Second World War dragged the United States into bloody conflict. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. The 80th Infantry Division was ordered to active service on July 15, 1942 at Camp Forest, Tennessee, and would undergo vigorous basic and advanced training across the country, including Kansas and the Arizona-California Desert Training Center. Lieutenant General Lester J. McNair uh, came to visit. He was Chief of Army, uh, Commander General, I think they call it, of the Army Ground Forces. So he wanted to check the division out, and he said that the division scored the highest ever on the desert maneuvers with the artillery. He was an artillery man, and he was supposed maybe to get an army group when they came to Europe. And uh, he, uh, he put in a good word for the division all the way, and he said, we are ready to go. And so uh, we went on from there. He gave us an okay. Under the command of Major General Horace L. McBride, the 80th sailed for England on July 1, 1944, and after less than a month of training with the British, the division hit the shores of Utah Beach on August 2nd, as part of the ongoing Normandy invasion. The soldiers of the 80th would go on to embrace their destiny as the workhorse of General George Patton's Third Army, with Major General McBride often conferring with the famous commander known as Old Blood and Guts as well as Corps Commander Major General Eddy. By August 20th, 1944, the Blue Ridge Division had already proven their considerable strength when the 318th Regiment successfully defeated the Germans at Argentan, France. The regiment's commander, Colonel McHugh, marked the victory by presenting the town's mayor with an American flag, which then proudly flew over the liberated landscape. As the 80th troops pressed on into the winter months, preparing to breach the Siegfried Line, a surprise German counterattack and breakthrough in the Ardennes mushroomed into the Battle of the Bulge in December 1944. The massive German assault would result in the largest, bloodiest single battle of World War II. I don't think anybody can really describe it unless they've been there, because it was miserably cold, the uh, snow was deep, the enemy was pretty tough, and they were fighting for their lives. With spearheads of German armor bearing down on the vital port of Antwerp, the 80th was immediately sent to protect the city of Luxembourg, and by Christmas Day of 1944, the men of the 80th were side by side with the tanks of the 4th Armored Division battering forward through murderous opposition to help the besieged 101st Airborne Division pin down in the deep snow of Bastogne. And immediately when we attacked, and we didn't go 100 feet and machine guns opened up, but we attacked and attacked, uh, moving forward all the time. Uh, and the snow was, was knee to waist deep. And the, the bitter part of it was we had no blankets, no overcoats. There were no, there were no uh, uh, buildings, no fires. And uh, as we attacked, uh, we were losing more and more men all the time. If you were wounded, we were told the medics could not get through. On December 28th, the 80th broke through enemy lines, bringing relief to the 101st and crushing General von Rumstead's hopes for a major Nazi victory. The 80th once again lived up to its motto of only moves forward, marching onward to decisive triumph, 
crossing the river into Germany by the first week of February 1945, breaking through the West Wall. By early April, the division had crossed the Rhine and took the industrial city of Kassel. The Blue Ridgers pushed eastward, also capturing Goethe, Erfurt, and Weimar Buchenwald, where they helped liberate concentration camps. The division's final sweep into Austria ended with the 80th receiving the surrender of the entire German 6th Army. Taking advantage of an offer from General Eisenhower, Nazi soldiers surrendered in droves to the 80th, rather than face being held as POWs by the Russian forces. The German surrender was so widespread, one POW from the 80th convinced the commandant of his prison camp to surrender to the American prisoners. I lost no time. I went to see the lieutenant and they said to him, hey, you're being sacrificed. You're going to be taken, turn the prison camp over to me, and uh, I'll put in a good word for you. He says, I can't do that. That afternoon I was called to the commandant's office, who was a lieutenant colonel, first World War man, in his 60s, maybe in his late 60s, the German colonel. And he referred to this conversation, and he said, well, would you put in a good word for me? I said, well, you heard the terms. Turn the camp over to the GIs, and I'll see what I can do for you. With this, he took his pistol belt off, laid it on the desk in front of him, turned around, took a decorated sword out of a closet behind it, laid it on the desk, and I was flabbergasted. By VE Day, the division had seen over 277 days of fighting and had captured over 200,000 Germans. Victory had taken a heavy toll on the division, however. By war's end, the 80th lost 3,038 men and suffered 12,484 wounded. But the bravery and unbreakable spirit of the 80th is epitomized by the heroic actions of its many decorated soldiers, including its four Medal of Honor winners. Sergeant Day Turner, assigned to Company B, 319th Infantry Regiment, he commanded a nine-man squad with the mission of holding a critical position in Luxembourg. The fight raged for four hours when, with only three men of the defending squad left unwounded, the German enemy finally surrendered. First Lieutenant Edgar H. Lloyd, assigned to Company E, 319th Infantry Regiment. Lloyd was serving as rifle platoon leader tasked with the mission of expelling an estimated enemy force of 200 men from a heavily fortified position near Pompeii, France on September 14, 1944. He personally destroyed five machine guns and crews. Second Lieutenant Harry J. Michael, 318th Infantry Regiment. He too was serving as a rifle platoon leader when his company began an assault on a wooded ridge northeast of the German village of Niedersurf. Michael single-handedly captured two German machine gun crews, captured and killed over a dozen enemy fighters, and led his platoon in two successful attacks before being killed by an enemy sniper. Staff Sergeant Paul J. Wiedorfer was a private with the 318th Infantry Regiment when they came under fire from German machine guns on Christmas Day 1944 in Belgium. And as I'm laying there, I'm more or less thinking to myself, Something's got to be done because the borders are starting to get closer and closer and closer to us and somebody's got to do something. And frankly, it was a little bit that I have to somehow get my ass out of there. And what made me do it, I'll never know, but I decided to take off and see if we can somehow stop this fire in the machine gun nest. He single-handedly took out two German machine gun nests, forcing the Nazis to surrender and saving his platoon from being trapped or killed by enemy fire and artillery. The only surviving World War II recipient of the Medal of Honor from the 80th, Wiedorfer died in 2011 at the age of 90. Throughout the Second World War, the Blue Ridge soldiers faced hardship and adversity, but always rose to meet every challenge with courage and valor, forever cementing the legacy of the 80th, 
and truly demonstrating the strength of the mountains.